Today I'm going to show you how to make something follow you in Rec Room. And if you've seen my previous videos on this, you're going to want to stick around because this one is very different. Today, hey, it's RCL from the future. If you guys want this as an invention, it's going to cost you 250 likes. Hey, I'll you. The first thing you want to do is get whatever it is that's going to be following you. Today we're going to use Barry, the Rec Room monster. Whatever item it is that you get, you need to make sure that you can edit that item. So if you get an invention, make sure that you can edit it. So once you have your monster, whatever item is going to follow the player, you want to go ahead and open your make pin and hit edit and click on it. And you're going to want to find this little symbol here. This is the pivot point of your item. If you don't see one of those, you're going to go in your maker pin and go down to general settings here and check this show pivot. Make sure that that's on. So once you see this pivot point, we need to move this pivot point to their face or like right, right here in front of their face. The easiest way I know to do that is to hit select on the maker pin, select one thing, this little menu will pop up. You hit options, you hit select all. And then we're just going to move everything so that this pivot point ends up at his face. Now that we've got it at its face, we're not done. We need to move it so that this blue line is pointing straight at us. The red line is pointing off to the left and the green line is pointing straight up and down. Make sure that you do this step. If you don't get the pivot point on there correctly, then it's gonna look all wonky and sideways and you don't want that. Okay, so once you have your pivot point kind of figured out, you're gonna wanna hit done and you're gonna wanna hit configure on the monster open this up here turn it into decoration uncheck anything over here that's checked so if it's grabbable uncheck it let's see let's uncheck support wall run uncheck that you want to give it some sort of tag we're going to give it a enemy tag then you want to scroll all the way down and check the can modify with circuit all right, we're done with him. Now let's move on to circuits. All right, so for circuits, let's start with what we know. Whenever the thing is following you, we want it to be constantly changing position. So first, let's cover the changing position part. So normally, when we want to change the position of something, we would use a set position chip. But this doesn't account for rotation. So for rotation, we would use a respawn chip. However, I did a stream a little while back and somebody showed me this chip, the set transform chip. And as you can see, it's basically the same thing as a set position. It just has rotation on it. So we're going to use the set transform. All right. So that takes care of the changing position part. Now we need to deal with the constantly part for this. We're going to get an event receiver and we're going to configure it to be a 30 Hertz receiver. Now there is one more chip we have to add in between these two, and that's gonna be the if local player is authority chip. Now I don't wanna go into super detail about what this chip does. If we wanna put it simply, it just makes sure that the monster is in the same spot for everybody that's in the room. Okay, so when you hook these up, you're gonna hook up the event receiver to the if local player is authority, and then you're gonna hook up the I'm authority to the set transform. Of course, right now it's not gonna do anything, but that's how you hook it up later when you do hook it up. Now we can move on to filling out all of this on this chip. So the first thing we need to fill out is the target. We know that the target is going to be Barry, who we gave the tag of enemy to earlier. So for that, we're going to use a rec room object get first with tag. And then we are going to configure that string over there to say enemy. There we go. And then we can go ahead and connect the object to the target and we're going to move it over that way. So these next two, position and rotation, require a little vector math and some placeholder chips. So we're gonna go over here. Okay, so let's say we have a player right here on the map and we have a monster right here on the map. If we subtract the position of the monster from the position of the player, we will get a vector that looks like this. It'll go from the monster to the player. Now this vector is half of what we want. That vector we just got takes care of the rotation because the rotation doesn't care how long the vector is, the magnitude of the vector. We can just use the result of that subtract chip for the rotation. But now we need to deal with the position that we want the monster to be set to. Because if we hook this up to the position on that chip back there, when we start it, all it's going to do is jump immediately from here to here. And wherever this player goes, it's just going to jump immediately where the player is. We don't want that. What we want to do 
is chop this vector up into smaller chunks. So what we want to do is every time it sets position, we want to add a chunk. Next time it sets position, we want to add a chunk. Next time it sets position, we want to add another chunk. So let's do that, but with circuits. Let's go ahead and deal with the rotation since that's easier. All we need is a subtract chip, two get position chips, and then for this tutorial, we're going to use a get local player chip. Now, if you're familiar with circuits, then you know that this chip is only going to let it follow one player. In the next video, we're going to set up a separate system to have it follow the closest player in the room. But for the basics, we're just going to have it follow you, the one player. So we're going to get the position of the player and we're going to get the position of the monster. Now we can hook up the subtract chip. Just make sure that your player position goes in the top input and your monster position goes in the bottom input. If you do it the other way around, it's gonna go flying away from you. And we can go ahead and hook that up to rotation. Now let's take care of the position. We're gonna start off with a vector normalize. So what this is gonna do is make it smaller, but keep the directionality. But we wanna make it even smaller than that. So for that, we're gonna get a multiply chip. And we're going to multiply it by a really small number. Go ahead and connect the normalized vector to that top value. And then for this second value, we're going to need to create our own vector. So we're going to get a vector create. So to make this vector even smaller, we're going to multiply it by a tiny number, a decimal. So we're going to change all three of these to 0.0333334. This is the same number that comes out of the delta time on the event receiver. These three numbers are what controls the speed of your monster. If you want your monster to go faster, you make them a little bit bigger. If you want it to go slower, you make it a little bit smaller. If you make all of these one, then it's going to go way too fast. You need to keep it into a small decimal. And if you're going to increase the speed, I would say do it slowly, like slowly add to it, make it a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger until you find the right speed. Secondly, if you change these numbers, I highly recommend that you keep all of them exactly the same, unless you want it to stay on one level. If you don't want it to move up and down, then you need to change this Y in the middle to a zero. For this example, I am just going to have it stay on one level. Okay, so now we have our little vector chunk and all we need to do is add that vector chunk to the current position of the monster. So for that, we use an add chip. We're going to add the position of the monster to the tiny chunk that we have down here. And then that is going to be our new position. All right, so now we can hook up our event receiver and here comes Barry. <laughs> now, the real question is, can we make a next spot? If this video helped you out, make sure you use code RCL1 next time that you're in Rec Room. It really helps you out. If the video on following the closest player is up, I'll leave it right here for you. Subscribe so you don't miss it, of course. But if it's not here, how about you enjoy some funnies? RCL Man out.